Hey guys, it's Willie Sandry. Today we're talking about how to set up your locking miter bit and two really important key factors to getting successful results when it comes to actually cutting the locking miter joint on your project. Stick around, we'll get into it. So this is what the locking miter bit looks like. Router table's unplugged here. And the resulting joint is a really neat interlocking one that fits together without much fuss and then on the show side you can get a nice tight miter that can actually be um, burnished over with a screwdriver so it's easy to glue and it's easy to fit. To set up your router bit once you have a setup block all you have to do is use that block as a gauge to set bit height and fence position but initially it might be a little more challenging to set that up. Um, the idea in general is that one piece is routed on the table and one piece is routed vertically up against the fence. And that's what creates this sort of interlocking profile that works so well for furniture and leg building and just a multitude of projects. I've been using this joint since about 2013 um, quite regularly and I've just developed a couple things that have really helped me along my way and I want to pass them on to you um, so you don't struggle with the quality of the joint you wind up with and if you just do these two simple things, um, I think you won't fight it and you'll avoid any kind of tear out along the edge and just wind up with a nice finished product. This is the rockler bit and the first thing I like to do is to eyeball the setup to get everything close and then we'll do tests to make sure that the bit height is right. So your basic idea you want is the top of the bit is going to be about a sixteenth above your workpiece if you're using three quarter inch stock. So to dial in your bit height, you use a scrap board that's the exact same thickness as the stock you intend to use and just advance a straight edge and your straight edge should just barely nick the leading edge of that beveled router bit. Okay? You need to hit the angled part and that helps you set your bit height. So once the bit height is dialed in, we'll make test cuts. Okay, so we cut off the end of our sample board at the chop saw and that's just so we don't waste much lumber with each test cut. And so we'll just slide these together to see how we did with our bit height. And there's quite a ledge here, so it tells me that the bit is too low. We'll make an adjustment there and retest. When your bit height is set correctly, when you bring the pieces together and lay them flat, they'll be flush on the top. Okay, when you have it flush, both top and bottom, you know you've got your bit height correct. As far as setting the fence position, take another equal thickness piece and set it against the fence of the router table. And this time your straight edge should just hit this leading edge of the bit here. Okay, I'm actually contacting it pretty decent there, so I need to actually uh, move my fence. Now I'm missing it. You want to keep adjusting until you just barely kiss that leading edge of the fence at the table right there and we'll lock that in. Alright guys, let's get into those two key tips that will help improve the cut quality of your locking miter joints. Tip number one, and this is the most important tip, take strips of quarter inch MDF and install them on your router table fence with a little bit of double sided carpet tape and this simply lets you make the cut in two passes. So at this point our bit height is set, our router table is set, and we're going to add the spacers on the fence. We'll make one pass in all of our work pieces for both the table cuts and the fence cuts, and then we'll pull off these temporary spacers and make the second pass. And the second thing you can do is tape a piece of half inch MDF along the cutting edge of your workpiece. And just by attaching that down with some double sided carpet tape, Instead of having just a fine knife edge to be supported along the edge of the fence or the table, depending on your orientation, you'll actually have this bearing surface from the MDF. So I do consider this step optional, but it does improve the quality of your cut and you're less likely to damage that fine knife edge of your workpiece.
So we'll do the same thing for the vertical cuts. Attach a half inch MDF fence and we'll go ahead and make our vertical cuts. We just need to reset the feather boards here and we'll make all passes before we remove the sacrificial quarter inch MDF. So the bit height and the fence setting remain unchanged for these second passes. The only thing you may need to adjust is your feather boards. that nice knife edge cut that's protected by the scrap of MDF. As a final test, before you run your actual work pieces through the router table, go ahead and run one piece horizontally on the table and one piece vertically against the router fence and just see how the fit is. And I think you'll be amazed, there's just such a friction fit here that the parts will actually hold together just fine without glue and that's a sign that you're on the right track. Now with my practice pieces, I usually don't put the MDF fence, the quarter inch MDF against the fence. And because of that, I kind of expect a little bit of tear out. I don't worry about that on my test pieces, but when it comes time to route your actual project, make sure to put those quarter inch MDF strips on the fence and cut it in two passes. Here's the kind of chip out you can expect on the knife edge if you don't use the quarter inch MDF against your fence and make two passes. When it comes time to route actual work pieces, we've installed the quarter inch MDF strips on the fence. We've installed the half inch MDF strips on both sides of the work piece. And bonus tip here, we've identified two of the parts as T, meaning that we're gonna route them against the table surface, and two of the parts as F, meaning we're gonna route them against the fence surface. Orient your parts so that the T's are opposite and the F's are opposite. This way, when you go to put the project together, you only have to clamp in one direction. Okay, we've got one of our work pieces. This one's marked with an F. So we're gonna be making cuts with it backed up against the router table fence. And we've got our strips on, so we're gonna start making passes. Every piece will receive two passes. Since our project pieces are large panels, we actually have to remove the feather boards to make bolt passes on the table cuts. But it's easier to reset feather boards than it is to reset these quarter inch strips. So at this point, we've made one pass on each edge of all four panels. And so now we're just going to remove these quarter inch strips and make the second pass on each panel. Here we go for the second pass on the table panels. Okay, final second pass on the fence. Well, here's where we get to enjoy some of the benefits of all the extra steps we took at the router table, especially those strips of MDF. And you shouldn't have to work too hard to get the parts to come together. And it makes a really strong glue joint. After all, it is long grain to long grain glue joint. And the extra surface area provided by the locking miter bit is really just an extra bonus. And if you remembered to route the left and right edge of each panel the same way and the left and right edge of the adjacent panel the opposite way, you'll make glue up a lot easier on yourself. All right, guys, hopefully some of this information has inspired you to try a locking miter joint in your own shop 
Or better yet, maybe you have a locking miter bit that you just haven't given a try yet. Dust off that bit and give it a try. It's really not that bad. Hey, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.